Hi everyone, welcome to the Electric Supercar Channel. Today we're working on the 1977 Porsche Targa. So if you're new, let me catch up to speed. This car is completely stripped. We did that last time, we got it all scanned as well. The plan with this one is to do a complete restoration and also make it electric. We've got it on this sweet rotisserie. This will give us access to basically every side, all the angles to make a great car. For today's video, we're gonna do electric power steering. For those of you who are new to the channel or maybe just new to power steering, let me catch up real quick. For a traditional steering system, you've got the steering wheel, which is like the user input. That input travels down the steering column. Usually there's a gear that makes a rack move and that's kind of what pushes the wheels in or out to make your car turn. When your car is going at speed, it is pretty easy to turn. However, when you're in a parking lot, especially if you've got a heavier vehicle, it can be a challenge for some drivers to manipulate the steering wheel to turn easily. For most modern internal combustion cars, there is a power steering pump located on the engine that's belt driven. That system applies hydraulic pressure to make it easier to turn the car left or right. If we remove the engine though, we no longer have that hydraulic assist. So we've got a couple options that we can do. So there are three options. One, you can replace that hydraulic pump with an electric pump. Problem solved. Keep all the same steering rack, all the same hydraulics. Only downside is it does make a little bit more noise than some of the other options. Another option is you have an electric steering rack. So this takes the input from the steering wheel, provides power to the rack, that then allows the wheels to pivot. The third option is what we're gonna talk about today and what we previously did with the Nissan here. That is an electric assisted power steering column. What that does is it takes the input from the steering wheel and amplifies it down to the steering rack. In the example of this vintage Porsche, it actually never had power steering, so we're gonna be adding it to it. So follow along and I'll show you how it's done. This is the power steering setup for the Porsche. All right, so this is the uh, motor. Um, this will be on the steering column. This is the brains of the operation. Looks like you've even got the ability to kind of turn it up and down, the amount of power steering. Got some brackets. I'm guessing this is a uh, steering column adapter. So we took out the steering column last time and also the steering rack. So we may have to put those ones back just to make sure we get the proper alignment. So, so I guess I'll take this side and then we'll, I'll come over here and then once we're at the front, we'll flip it. So, okay. That's better, okay. So just like that, we've got the subframe back on, which includes the steering rack and uh, this part of the steering column. We also put on steering column from the passenger compartment. So basically we've just got to figure out how to mount the new power steering unit. This is that uh, intermediate piece. Uh, we're gonna take this U-joint off. So we use the same U-joint and then we got the new pieces that we can mount. All right, so this is the bracket that attaches to the motor and then also to the car. Really? So I gotta open it up a little bit. Just a little bit of the powder coating. Looks like it's including the hole. I've temporarily mounted the power steering unit. So it's connected there. You'll see that's not connected here and it has to go down like that far. And so the reason why it's not able to go down is it's just hitting this. And so they mentioned that we'll have to do some modifications. It's probably got to go down by an inch. So I don't think that's like, you know, hammered out. I think that's cut it out. So we'll cut it. If we need to, we'll do a little patch, but uh, just need to make some room. This customer is not a purist. I mean, that's why we're doing the electric conversion. So um, he's, he's okay with it. Uh, if you're a purist, turn it away. So I'm just gonna do like maybe 90 or 60, just this way. So when, whenever you're ready, yeah, let's lock it around there. Cool. 
I think I've finally cut enough uh, to where things can be fastened. Um, I do need to make a few changes. So number one, we've got this long set screw, so meaning is that turns that'll hit here. So I'm gonna get a shorter set screw. Here's the bracket that came with it. And basically this hole goes there. This one, the hole here goes here. And you can see that uh, there's just, yeah, there's just no way. I meaning this, this hole causes the whole thing just to you know, sit up way too tall. So again, we'll make a bracket like this uh, that we can get from Sun Cut Sand. It'll be pretty quick. So I got this 3D printed bracket, designed it. And just in case anybody was wondering, so this uh, bracket that I made, it was my first try. That's just the dry shampoo. I'm trying to get some exact hole locations though. So I figured that should be pretty good. So that's good method to mark your holes. So uh, I'm just gonna drill some holes here and I'll put in some rib nuts. So there's the bracket, we got it all fastened in place. Probably can't see that last one. But uh, yeah, got the rib nuts in. Um, this is all ready to go. Obviously we'll make this one out of uh, steel, get it from Send Cut Send. And I'll probably make another, uh, I'll call it like a patch plate that I can kind of weld on, um, cover everything up. All right, today for our sponsor, we have EV Dance. This is a level one and two portable charger. So I can tell you right now that uh, one of the great things about the portable ones is they are small and lightweight. So again, very small, compact. All right, so it's kind of got your regular house outlet. All right, again, very compact, small unit. It does have just your regular 1772 charge plug. One other thing they offer is an extension cable. So just like a house extension cord, this is an extension cord for your J1772. So they've done all the calculations with wiring and things, and this can get you an extra 40 feet. So basically, if this is the end of your normal charger and you can't quite reach it, you can actually plug it in here and then you got an extra 40 feet. This is good with level one and level two chargers up to 50 amps. Normally I have just a 220 outlet here in the garage that I use for a lot of my EV chargers, but let's say you don't have a 220 plug. So this will work on just a normal house plug like this. This is usually about a 15 amp, but it will also operate on a plug like this. This is usually a 20 amp plug. So this one does come with a regular extension. So meaning you can go to a regular house plug. So we're gonna do that one just because I think that's what most people will have. So blue, I think that means we're ready to go. So it changed from blue to green and it's kind of flashing, which means it's charging. So you might be asking yourself, why would you need an extension cord for your EV charger? Well, it might be that you're kicked out of your garage. It's too full or you have to park outside. That is a great reason. And that's why you would need a little extra length for your cord. So the original one can go to about here. So we're gonna get the extension. Oh yeah, easy. So again, this is green flashing, which means it's charging. Got the original cord plus the extension. So again, we could have gone a lot further. Maybe you're going to a public charging station and it's kind of blocked, so you can't quite get in, but the cord's available, you just can't reach it. Another case for an extension cord. All right, so this is the level one and two charger from EV Dance. It comes with a 25 foot cable and charges at 16 amps. It comes with a standard NEMA 515 plug and also a NEMA 620 plug. It is IPX6 waterproof. It has grounding protection, overcharge protection, lightning protection, over voltage protection, under voltage protection, heat protection, and over current protection. It has an LED strip that communicates what it's doing, when it's charging, when it's not, and when it has a fault. And it's compatible with all J1772 cars. It is very small, light, and compact. It has an easy on-the-go portable bag. This one's more focused on portability and low cost. So if you're interested in something like this, I'll leave a link in the video description below. It is time to hook up the controller. So we got the controller here, the outputs from uh, the motor, we've got kind of, I'll call it the high power wires, and these are probably like sensor or position wires. So on this one, so essentially these two plug into here. So again, one's there, and the other one is here. From this guy, we've got a ground, big power wire. We also have, I'll call this like a wake or key on wire. Um, I learned from last time though, we need a battery, not just a power supply. So we'll go get started on wiring. Sure, that's not working. 
All right, so I think I figured out what's going on. It's not providing any power yet. And I think what it is, is it's got this one going to here, which I believe it's wanting that to be ground. Um, and right now that's not connected to the chassis or anything. So I'm just gonna make a quick little wire to go to the ground and I think it'll turn on. So now when we attach the wake wire key on, I think we should hear at least a click. Click, good. Okay, we got this adjusted in the middle. Let's try, I don't know if that's all the way up or all the way down. Oh yeah, that's up. So that makes it super easy. Now we'll go off. Oh yeah, I mean I can turn it, but it's pretty hard. We are going to put the steering wheel on. This is with it off. Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell because with the uh, no tires on the ground, there's not a lot of resistance. I mean, I can make it move. So now we'll turn it on. I don't think I heard a click that time. What the heck is going on? All right, I'm learning about this system. There's the dial to dial in how much power assist you want on your steering. Essentially, if you dial it all the way down, it's off. So that's where I was confused. And when I would try and turn it on, it wouldn't even click. And I was like, geez, what did I do now? If it's all the way off, it's off. So it won't even turn on. So that's cool that you can like turn it all the way off. Um, but let me show you, we'll do off and then on. Here's what I did to add some resistance. I put a ratchet strap onto this uh, rod end here. Basically that's giving it extra resistance. So for all I can, I cannot move that. I'll go ahead and, so yeah, it's definitely given a lot of boost. So we do have the control unit here. I don't know exactly where we're gonna put it yet. Um, otherwise I'd mount it. So there's a lot of other 12 volt systems, things we need to figure out. So for now, we're just gonna leave that be, but we do have the motor mounted. All right, now that we've got everything kind of working, installed and working, we've got to replace the 3D printed parts with some real metal parts. I got this bracket, and as you guys know, what I do is I then turn this into metal. So basically this is send, cut, send, anything that you can think up in your head, you can get in metal. So laser cutting, bending, all this fun stuff. Beautiful. Got things connected, all the uh, various splines are lined up. And then this is the new bracket. So basically uh, it goes to there and you probably can't see it. I guess right there on the other side. And then it mounts there and there. So again, everything's like really tight. I can move the whole car. So uh, we'll test it one more time, just to make sure that uh, as it applies load, that we don't see anything weird going on. So this is the switched power. You heard it click. To provide a little resistance, we are again putting the ratchet strap there to the bottom of our rotisserie and then to the steering linkage there. So that way when we turn it, it'll be giving us quite a bit of resistance. I just want to see, make sure that nothing's kind of uh, binding or flexing weird up here. So that's about as much torque as you would see. I think you can see things kind of flex just a little bit, but I think that's going to be good enough. The other thing is I wanna make kind of a cover that we can weld to the car itself. So I'm gonna take this off, get a good scan, and create something that we can get from Send Cuts In. I imported the scan into CAD. You can see the hole that I cut out here. I then designed a box that could be laser cut and folded so that I could weld it into place. All right, next I give you this box or cover. Again, this is out of sheet metal. It's bent up. I'll probably just weld, do a quick little seam weld there and there. I'll show you how it's placed in there and then this kind of cutout will make sense. So in the foot well, this is what we had to cut out to kind of relieve for the power steering unit. And uh, just to make sure we can seal all that up. So that cutout matches perfectly with kind of the contours that are already there. So that will allow us to kind of tack weld and weld, but allow us to weld it to the body itself. We got this upside down now, so this should be a little easier to weld. Some places it kind of laid down pretty decent and other places not quite as well. But overall, 
this should do the job and it's kind of in a discrete area. So underneath the footwell, I don't think anybody will see it, but good place to practice. One of the other things I'm not gonna paint this. Usually when I do anything like this, very first thing I'll do afterwards is uh, give it a nice coat of paint. This whole Porsche is going to get blasted. So basically everywhere is gonna get blasted. It'll hopefully end up like that. It's bare metal that we can kind of recoat everything. All right, so we are gonna flip the Porsche back over. We're gonna check out the top side. Um, maybe do a little bit of touch up there. Uh, just make sure everything's clean, looks nice. There it is on the top side. So the unit kind of sits down in there and we've got this little box, whatever you want to call it, that's welded underneath. Just kind of cleaned off, make sure we're all good on top. There's no kind of pass through areas. Uh, it's looking really good. That's gonna do it for this episode. We did the complete power steering kit. We had to make a new bracket, got that made from Send Cut Send, and also made a patch for that relief cut. Got it all welded in, and this is just one step closer. So thanks for following along. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. That'll do it for this time. See you next time. <laughs> Man, I swear last time it felt a lot lighter. Panel, let's see, we'll do, including making it a light, including a making, this one is to make it, nope. Man, alive. What's up with my hair?